Why should your company advertise on EDFL Web TV? EDFL Web TV reaches an audience drawing from the biggest sporting body in Melbourne's expanding northwestern suburban corridor, with over 9,000 participants and tens of thousands of families and fans distributed on a network reaching thousands of tech savvy social media subscribers. EDFL Web TV can present your company's product or service in a top of the show billboard, similar to a network TV sports broadcast, either with vision or still graphics. Sponsored segments are available and can be integrated into the regular week-to-week -week show. EDFL Web TV is also compatible with conventional TV ads, either professionally made or made by the EDFL. Customise your advertising package to reach the EDFL Web TV and social media audience today. Hi, I'm Claire Barley and welcome back to the home of EDFL Web TV, the Pasco Vale Hotel. This season, we'll be coming to you weekly right here on the EDFL YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with all our videos. It's been another action-packed week in the EDFL, so let's jump straight into this week's top talking points. Hi, this week we're at Essendon Duda Stars and we're here with an ex Duda Stars junior who recently competed for Vic Metro at the National Youth Girls Championships. Welcome, Monique Conti. Thanks, Claire. So what made you want to start playing football? Well, when I was younger, my brother always played football, so that got me into wanting to play, and I started when I was about 11 years old for the Duda Stars junior team. You're also a keen basketballer. How do you balance your love of these two sports? Well, they both complement each other, so it's easier for me, and they're on different days, so that helps me out a lot as well. Hmm. How do you find being a girl in such a male-dominated sport like AFL? Well, it is hard, especially when I was playing in the boys' league because all the boys thought that girls couldn't play and that's normally, that's normally what happens. But um, the game for girls is just, it keeps growing a lot and it's getting bigger. What was the highlight of your recent tournament? First of all, the highlight was definitely winning the national championship yeah. and in the end being named in the All-Australian team as well. What does it mean for you to be chosen for the All-Australian team? It was such an honour. I wasn't expecting it um, at all because I didn't think about it in the end. I just, I was just thinking about winning as a team and all that. And but being selected in in the end, it was just, it was just such an honour. Why do you think that you were named one of the best players? Well, I think I just played my game and I didn't let the nerves get to me too much. So I did my best and I got named in it. So it was good. Who were some of the key players and teammates that helped you win at the national championships? Well, first of all, um, our captain and our captains, Brittany Bonucci and Lauren Hojanaki, they helped us win the grand final and lead us to a championship with their just great leadership and so did the leadership group, of course. Um, Prudence, Cortez and Sarah Duggan as well, because they were, they were just great in our forward line and we got the ball down to them. They, they kicked a couple of goals to get us ahead in the grand final. Um, and at Maddie Prosparkas as well, she was a very strong target in our forward line and also helped us to get a lead on the scoreboard, which was good. What feedback have you received from your coaches since the championships? Well, I got feedback from my midfield coach um, and he told me that I, just, I did so well in the midfield I st stuck to all this team structures and I just helped everyone out by doing my role, so that was good. Mm. Why do you think that women's pro football doesn't have as big a profile as men's? Well, I think because AFL started as a male dominant sport, so it's stayed like that until now, but um, it has, it's continuing to grow now with um, 140 youth girl teams in Victoria now and 250 women's team in, in Victoria in total and so that's continuing to grow so that's really good. Mm. What are the key factors that help you play so well? Well for me personally it's my, my speed which gets me through the games and yeah I'm just really good with the hard ball and just running that's mm. what I love to do. <laughs> Duda Stars doesn't currently have a youth girls team, Why, do you think it's important that they do have one? Yes, I do, because I know there is a lot of girls out there that would love to play footy, and if Duda Stars um, had a youth girls team, I think a lot of girls will, will come and play for them. Mm. Um, where do you currently play, considering Duda Stars? I play for Melbourne University youth girls team. Excellent. 
what advice would you give to young girls that do want to start playing football? Well, I would, I would say to them not to worry about what the boys think and just because boys play the sport only doesn't mean they can't play it, so just give it a crack. What are your hopes for your future in sport? First of all, I want to go to college in America and play college basketball over there. And if that doesn't work out, I want to come back here and play in the AFL Women's League that will hopefully come, come in the future and develop. And yeah. Yeah, that would be really exciting. And I really look forward to seeing you hopefully in, in the Women's AFL League very soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Thanks. How are you feeling in the countdown to your first game? Uh, yeah, I'm not, not feeling too bad. I've, uh, obviously, I'm getting on in years. I've, uh, that's when I come back to Duda's, there's been sort of no expectation of you know, when, I, when I'd return or, or if I'd even return. Um, interrupted pre-season, you know, just coming back from an Achilles injury, it's been, it's been quite difficult, but I'm almost there. What have you gone through in the last 18 months since you last played rehab, injuries, re-injuries? What has actually been your story? Uh, basically, uh, I left the club uh, six years or so ago, chasing, chasing a flag. Uh, didn't eventuate, went out to the Western region. Uh, had, had a bad Achilles injury, tried to play through it, uh, didn't work out. And uh, yeah, basically, sort of haven't played footy for the last 18 months. How much did you miss the game when you were out? Like, has it given you an appreciation for, for how good it is to still be able to play? Uh, oh, I don't know whether I can still play, to tell the truth. But uh, I was, yeah, I was pretty hurt, so I wasn't sort of missing it too much. I uh, got a phone call from Dean Wallace in the, at the start of the year saying you know, he was, was going to take on the job and obviously I, I still follow Duda's a bit, so it, you know, seeing their progression and saw that they went to B grade and you know, thought I could help out. Does that carry a bit of pressure though to hear some of the fans and some of the opposition players and fans talk about Cade Carey like he's, he's coming back and you know, some people are trembling at the thought of actually having to go and man you up again? No, no, look, there's, there's no pressure. Like, like I said, um, uh, I'm just purely back to, to lend a hand with the team and uh, you know, I'm definitely not going to reach the heights I, I did sort of six or so years ago, but um, any, contribu any, any contribution would be good. Yeah. What would team success mean to you this year? Oh, def definitely the flag, you know. Um, Duda's aren't a, they're not a B-grade club. Um, it's a very, very tight competition this year. Uh, I think we've got the, the group to go the, the full distance. But uh, anything, anything other than, than a flag is sort of unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. And so we move on to the discussion panel of this week's episode. We are bringing back the podcast this week. Click through to the EDFL YouTube channel to hear us talk in depth. But uh, right now I've got Adam Russell from EDFL Radio joining me to go through some of the headline issues. Adam, great to have you on Web TV. Thanks for having me, Tao. So uh, what have you got for me? We'll start in Essendon Ford at Division 1, some of the headlines of the week. Well, Tao, you were out at Hillside and there was the issue of the quiet siren. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, the uh, end of the Hillside versus Glenroy game. A Hillside in front comfortably in the last quarter only for Glenroy to roar back with four goals in time on and they nearly had a fifth. The ball was marked at the top of the goal square by Jaden Borg. He thought he was lining up for the match winning goal. However, there were celebrating Hillside fans running onto the field and all of a sudden the players realised that the siren may have gone with the ball in the air. Adam, I've got to give credit to the majority female umpiring crew. Of course, it was the uh, Women in Football round raising money for the Cancer Council of Australia. They were all wearing the pink uniforms. They came together, had a conference and said, yes, one of us did hear the siren. The ball was in the air. The mark doesn't count. And you can watch it for yourself if you click through to the EDFL YouTube channel. It was an amazing finish. And uh, really, the, the ball must have uh, been a split-second decision. So thankfully, the umpires got it right at the end of a very difficult game. Uh, what's, uh, what's the next talking point in Division 1? Well, Glenroy, they're still winless. Do they face relegation now, do you think? It's a tough one. I still think Glenroy have a couple of the best players in the division. And once they put things together, I can see them beating almost anyone else. That's what is so tough for them. They've had uh, four losses now. 
by you know less than a couple of kicks and they really are starting to become the nearly team. I thought that uh, Trav Dulik and also Josh Tremberth absolutely dominated this game. And I mean, Dulik is probably the best player in the comp, and Tremberth might be in the top 15, maybe even in the top 10 if this form continues. So when you've got a couple of stars like that, it's about a, the whole 22 getting on the same page. And what we'll do is we'll hear from Lance Whitnell, the Glenroy coach, but before him, our Sports Moves Player of the Day. That was Victor McAuliffe from Hillside, and also the Hillside coach, Steve Burns. Have you ever played in a game with a finish quite like that? Oh, mate, never. Well, not since juniors anyway in the grand finals, but, um, yeah, that was definitely one of the best best games we've ever played in. You know, coming into the first round, our first our three, first three practice matches, we played really well. We, we looked up and about, won all three of them. Um, yeah, and then it was just came out first round, got smacked, and then, yeah, it was just... Oh, very surprised, very surprised. And where were you when the siren went? Like, were you in the back 50 trying to defend? Were you further up the ground? Like, Yeah, I was just on the 50 here, in, did, the, in the back, yeah. Did, did you get in and, and get a word in the umpire's ear? Did you know that the siren had definitely gone before the mark, or did you oh, even hear it? I had no it? clue, I had no clue. I've coached in a lot of games that have gone down to the wire, but um, nothing like that. I just felt for the players so much. I was uh, just hoping and hanging on uh, that the umpires were going to do the right thing and pay the right decision. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was just a great win for the boys. They're such a young group. Um, I think our midfield today was two 18-year-olds, two 19-year-olds and a 20-year-old. So, um, you know, you've got five kids under 20 taken on the might of Glenroy and the quality players they've got going through there. It was just a great performance by our kids. With the draw we had, yeah, I I, I think everyone got excited because we recruited Stockholm Rocky and Ross Waitman. But Ro Rocky's played seven minutes before today and he still wasn't right today. Uh, Ross Waitman's been injured and sort of running around on one leg, but he was outstanding today, I thought. Um, and Matty Stocko's been trying to do it all on his own. We've had to play in midfield and not forward because of the youth we've got in there. So, yeah, it was always going to be hard for us. And as I just said to, to Adam, you know, we, we've used 36 players. We, we, every week there's five changes and it's really tough. But when we've got our full, if we ever get our best side on the ground, I think we're competitive with everybody, maybe bar the, the top two sides who, to me, look like they're streets ahead at the moment. Yeah, we spoke about Julie before the game. Um, it's, it's one thing, these kids don't know who he is. That's the thing, you know, and it's really hard to, until they play him to actually see what he does. But I thought Monkey, who's normally a ruckman, number 37, Shannon Ball, played pretty well on him at centre-half forward, you know, and I don't, don't think Trav had that much of an influence on the game as a centre-half back. I think he looked really dangerous when he went forward, but I was just hoping he wasn't going to play on ball because if he had to play on ball, we were going to struggle to match up on him. So you, you were obviously beneath the siren. You, you heard the siren yeah. quite quite clearly. Yeah, and I was definitely... He didn't mark it beforehand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, so would, would you have... If, they, if the umpires had let him take the kick, would you have done something to try and not let the kick be taken or would you have just let it happen? Oh, you can't. I, can I know, you I know we're dealing in hypotheticals. But what can you do? I can't run out into the ground and go, I know what happened here, but I don't know what... We might have put in a review afterwards. Do the timekeepers have a say in that sort of... Uh, not sure what the timekeepers... I, I don't know if they can... Uh, if their voices would have been heard with 44 players <laughs> surrounding the umpires. Yeah. 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 But it's, uh, once they, the umpires put their hands up, it was a massive relief. Did you even hear the siren on the outer side of the ground? No, didn't hear it at all. I can tell you, we didn't hear it from here. And you're right next to it. We're right next to it, so... No, uh, I, I mean, I so the cameraman heard it. it. Adam, who was outside yeah. the box, heard it. We inside the box didn't. But how tough was that for you when you saw the hillside players celebrating and knowing that you wouldn't be lining up for potentially the match-winning goal? Uh, very tough. I looked at the umpire, and the umpire had paid the mark, so I was thinking, yep, no, they're going to complain and complain. The umpire's going to go back and say, yep, I've paid the mark. I didn't hear the siren. Um, unfortunately, don't know what happened, but didn't get paid the mark. So, uh, yeah, we've just got to move on and deal with it. Um, there's a lot of things that was, you know, we had a chance to win. We just didn't do it again. Yeah, it seemed to be most late in quarters, we were the ones charging, and I knew we had another go in us. We, our, our midfield rotation came off, and they'd gone back on ready to fresh for the last six minutes. So I knew we'd have a, a crack at them, and um, I knew that they had a few players that hadn't been playing for a couple of weeks. So I thought they'd... Um, run out of legs and they did but we just didn't have enough to get over the top of them we just touched on inside we're not starting as well as we should be um it's taking us a fair way into the quarters to sort of get into the to the gears and sort of what we're supposed to be doing and our structures and so forth and yeah we're just definitely not starting games and starting quarters well other sides are and it's we're playing catch-up footy right from the start and we got to do something about that and uh, if we can sort of do that early in the games and quarters we probably can run over sides because we've got a good young side that just continues to run hard and when the chips down, they keep pushing, but we're just giving away too much at the moment. You can imagine the questions will start coming in about about the R word, about the drop. Um, inside, do you address it? Do you start thinking of ways like, oh, how can we get out of this situation now? I mean, what, what's the focus going forward? Uh, the focus is just, as a group, we've just got to stick together. Um, we can't now sort of fraction off and sort of split away and, you know, have little groups picking and... and uh, the best way out of this is just sticking together as a team. Um, try, got to try and get the boys to enjoy themselves during the week, 
they come out a little bit relaxed so they're not you know hesitant about what they're doing so you know we just got to really get together as a group and stick together um, our results are showing that we we're good enough but we're just not quite to, to haven't got the uh, kill instinct at the moment so we just got to keep chipping away and um, working hard and we'll get out of this hole we're a close group down in Glenroy uh, from committee down down to the players and um, everyone's just supporting each other what you know we have to do is just a whole group the whole club must just work harder uh, it's not up to me to work harder just on my own it's up, not up to the players to work harder it's up to the committee as well we're, I mean we're pretty close we're a pretty pretty good group down there that just wants to succeed so we'll you know we'll head down and bum up and you know I know I've got full support from them so we'll just work harder and as a group together. So that was Lance Whitnell there the Glenroy coach and for those interviews in full click through to the EDFL podcast this week we'll have those interviews there along with an in-depth discussion of the game. Adam uh, Division 1 uh, well all the other issues we'll discuss on the podcast how about some of the headlines in Strathmore Community Bank Premier Division this week? Well it's Avondale Heights they're flying again with the likes of Galea, Rose and their small forwards all firing where do you think they go next? Well, it's a big question. Uh, a great win against Strathmore and to win by an arm's length margin as well, that would suggest that Avondale Heights, maybe I was a little bit hasty to say that at zip and four, they weren't going to make finals this year. They left themselves admittedly in a huge hole. They hadn't played very well in those first four games, but uh, to beat Strathmore by that sort of a margin, it suggests that maybe with their backs to the wall at the last possible opportunity, they're starting to produce some of their best footy. I'm not, I'm not in on them just yet. At two and four, there's very little margin for error, but uh, I did pick them to make the top four at the start of the season and maybe now we're starting to see some of that quality shine through sure now Strathmore there are reigning premiers in the uh, premiers in the premier division what's going wrong down there it's a tough one because initially I thought it might have been they got the balance of youngsters versus senior players wrong but I look at the uh, the best and the goal kickers this week and I see there that uh, you know Kennedy's kicked three goals he was dominating in the reserves he played under 18s last season but he'd kicked something like uh, 20 odd goals through the first month of the reserves and they've given him a senior game and he's kicked three goals and also Carigliano who played at TAC Cup he's back and playing senior footy at Strathmore and he was in the best players so it's hard to get a, a handle on what's going wrong out at Strathmore at the moment. Uh, they're under pressure themselves though. They wouldn't want to drop too many more because we saw it last year with Greenvale missing the top four. The last thing that they would want as the defending Premier is not even to make it back to September to have a crack at defending their crown. Now, Marby, they won a close one on the weekend up against West Coburg. Do they push for finals now? Ooh, this, this was a heartbreaker for West Coburg, and I think Marby will just be happy to bank the four points. I know that right now they're still, you know, sitting pretty ahead of the win-loss count, and they've maybe, uh, you know, proved a few people wrong by beating Keeler earlier in the season, but this is a little bit closer to what we were expecting in the off-season. They might be just that little bit better than Airport West and Northern and also West Coburg, but uh, they really had to pull this one out of the fire coming from a long way down, and for all the other talking points in Premier Division. Make sure you click through and listen to the podcast. We'll go through them in full. I want to get onto Strathmore Community Bank Division 2 because this division continues to throw up interesting storylines every week. Yes, definitely. Keelor Park, they're in a little bit of the doghouse at the moment. They've lost to Burnside Heights. In Burnside Heights' first win against an established club. Yeah, what a result. Uh, and I've been copying it on the EDFL Facebook page. I think just about everyone from Burnside Heights has jumped on and uh, said, you wrote us off last week. And you know what, Burnside, I apologise. Didn't give you enough credit and Keelor Park are in the doghouse at the moment. I, I just think that Louis Opetisano, their coach, thrust into the job late in pre-season, really on a hiding to nothing. He has such a good attitude and he's got so much positivity, but the rest of the club has got to come with him. It's sort of like the Jerry Maguire, help me help you, you know? That's what they need right now, and I think that they need more hands on the pump out at Keelor Park. No one wanted to be that first team to lose to an, uh, one of the, uh, the expansion sides. Yeah. They've become the first. It, it wasn't a good result for Keelor Park, and they're winless now and clear last on the table. But Burnside Heights, got to give them the credit. They had a really good spread of goal kickers. And after they lost quite heavily to East Sunbury, I was wondering, you know, where that breakthrough win would come from and if they were any closer to it. Well, uh, Tahan Rahifi and also the, the Burnside Heights team, they've uh, proven uh, me wrong so far, and I just wonder what they might have in the pipeline. What else was making uh, news in Division 2? Coburg Districts, they had an overpowering win over Chicana. Yeah, look, they did, and I actually had a, a couple of eyes on this game SMSing me during the course of the match saying that Chicana were really on top in the third quarter, and I thought, oh, okay, that's interesting, and then the quarter, three-quarter time score came through on my phone, and Coburg Districts had kicked away. So the 
uh, the report was that apparently Jakarta had a lot of possession but didn't know how to use it, turned the ball over a lot by foot, and Coburg districts just keep getting better and better. We were wondering where they were at. They'd put in a, a few poor performances in the first uh, month or so of the season, but they're starting to click now. Adam and I both picked them for the, uh, the Premiership in the pre-season videos, and we're just starting to get a bit of a look now at their best footy. So a bit of a setback for Jakarta, but uh, I'm sure they won't be too worried. Uh, Adam Russell, thanks for joining me on uh, EDFL Web TV. You'll be joining us for the preview as well. Yep. Uh, before you go, I want to ask you, what did you make of uh, the match that you were at at the weekend? Of course, it was the uh, Strathmore Community Bank showdown between Pasco Vale and Greenvale. Some of your takeaways from watching that one in person. Well, Pasco Vale, they really stood up in their first challenge of the season up against a very strong Greenvale side. Uh, leading goal kicker in the division, Ben Warren, he continued with his strong form kicking four goals. And overall, it was just a very strong win by Pasco Vale. Well, uh, certainly uh, there'll be more to talk about uh, in the preview video ahead of the unbeaten clash between Aberfeldy and Pasco Val this weekend. Click through to listen to the podcast. We'll go through all the issues in a bit more detail as part of EDFL Web TV this week. But from Essendon do to Stars training, that's it from Adam Russell and myself, Teo Pelizzeri. That's it for this edition of EDFL Web TV. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to get all our updates as soon as they go online. I'm Claire Varley and we'll see you back here at the Pasco Vale Hotel soon.